Today we're installing the Majax King XD lift kit designed to fit the club car tempo and precedent. Included with this kit is the main suspension, upper A-arms, front spindles, rear shock plates, rear risers, and rear U-bolts. Now let's get started. Switch the key to the off position, engage the parking brake, and flip the run toe switch to tow. Lift the cart with a floor jack and support the front frame with two jack stands. Remove the front wheel covers with a flathead screwdriver to access the lug nuts. Use a 19 millimeter socket to remove the lug nuts, then the front tires. Remove the front bumper using a 10 millimeter wrench and a 13 millimeter socket. Set aside for later. Remove the front wheel hubs using a 13 16 socket. Keep hubs and nuts for reinstallation later. Remove the tie rod ends from the spindles using a 17 millimeter wrench and 18 millimeter socket. Reattach the nut to the tie rod so you don't lose it. Using a 13 millimeter socket, remove and discard the lower shock bolts. Use a rubber mallet to free the shocks from the factory spindles. Using a 13 millimeter socket, temporarily remove the bolts from the steering rack to gain access to the A-arm bolts behind. The steering rack does not need to be fully removed, just up and out of the way. Remove and set aside the A-arm bolts with a 13 millimeter socket. The A-arms can now be removed from the frame. Use a half inch socket to remove the lower suspension assembly. Use caution though, as once all four bolts are removed, the assembly is free to drop. Use a second set of hands or a floor jack to assist. Retain the toe plate for use in the next step, but discard the factory lower assembly. Using the supplied M10 by 55 millimeter bolts, flat washers, lock washers, and toe plate, attach the Majax main suspension to the frame. Use the bolt holes in the toe plate to help align the suspension. Use thread locking adhesive and evenly tighten the bolts using a 17 millimeter socket. Install the new upper A-arms with the bend towards the front as shown. Secure using the factory bolts and tighten with a 13 millimeter socket and torque the bolts to 30 foot pounds. Reattach the steering rack to the frame using the retained factory hardware. Once all three bolts are hand threaded, tighten each one to 22 foot pounds using a 13 millimeter socket. Now is a good time to grease both upper A-arms located behind the steering rack. Attach the spindles to the upper and lower A-arms using the M10 by 80 millimeter bolts provided. Attach the lower bolt first, then the upper bolt. Note that the steering arm mount points towards the front of the cart. Tighten using a 17 millimeter wrench and socket. Lower the factory shock down to the A-arm mount and tighten the M8 by 50 millimeter bolts with a 13 millimeter wrench and socket. Attach the tie rod to the new spindle using a 17 millimeter wrench and an 18 millimeter socket. Secure the tie rod using the supplied cotter pin. Attach the spindles and secure the tie rods on the opposite side. Now is a good time to grease the remaining upper and lower A-arm grease fittings. Install the hubs on the new spindles and torque the hub nuts to 50 foot pounds using a 13 16 socket. Install your new wheels and tires using half inch lug nuts. Torque the lug nuts to 55 foot pounds using a 19 millimeter chrome deep well socket. Lift the front of the cart up and remove the jack stands. Do not attempt to adjust the alignment or camber at this time. Chalk the front tires and move to the rear of the cart. Lift the cart up by the axle as shown and place the jack stands under the frame in front of the rear leaf spring mounts. Remove the rear tires and wheels using a 19 millimeter socket. Note that the floor jack is still in place under the rear axle. Loosen, but do not fully remove the driver's side U-bolt using a 5 8 inch socket. This will allow for an easier installation of the rear components on the passenger side. Note that full removal will cause the motor to roll. Moving to the passenger side, fully remove the passenger side U-bolt using a 5 8 inch socket and discard. Using a 9 16 socket, Remove the nut and bushings from the bottom of the rear shock. 
Retain hardware for reinstallation later. Remove the factory leaf spring using a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench. Note that the leaf spring nut is offset towards the rear of the cart and should be reinstalled in the same manner. Also, temporarily unhook the brake cable from the front bolt of the leaf spring mount. Using a floor jack, slowly lower the axle to allow space for reinstallation of the leaf spring on top of the axle. Now is a good time to replace your bushings or install heavy duty leaf springs if needed. With the center nut offset to the rear, attach the rear leaf spring using the retained hardware. With the new ride height, the brake cable mount needs to be moved forward about one inch to be reinstalled. Then you can tighten both bolts using a 10 millimeter socket and a 13 millimeter wrench to 18 and a half foot pounds. In the factory shock bracket, install the M8 by 25 millimeter socket cap screw and hardware to the center hole. This will keep the plate in place and secured while driving. Using the floor jack, lower the axle down further to allow room for the lift block between the spring and the axle. For carts without heavy duty leaf springs, use the tall blocks included with the kit. Note that if you're installing heavy duty leaf springs, use the short lift block included with the kit. These are flat and have no front to back orientation. Notice the angle on the top side of the block slopes down towards the front of the cart. Place the block on the axle as shown. Slowly lift the rear axle while aligning the bolt on the leaf spring with the hole on the top side of the lift block. Place the new shock mounting plate on top of the leaf spring and hand tighten the shock to the plate using the factory bushings and hardware from earlier. Align the lower factory shock plate with the socket cap screw to the hole in the bottom of the axle, then drop the supplied U-bolt down through the upper shock into the lower factory plate. Ensure that all of these components are tight to one another with no gaps. Secure the U-bolts with the nuts and washers supplied and equally tighten both sides using a 17 millimeter deep well socket to 25 foot pounds. Using a 9 16 socket, tighten the shock hardware until the rubber bushing compresses and expands to the outside of the cup washer. This completes the passenger side installation. Move the floor jack to the driver's side of the rear axle and remove the shock hardware and the U-bolt that we loosened earlier. You can now follow the same steps from the passenger side to install the rear lift on the driver's side. Note that you may not have to move your rear brake cable mount on the driver's side. Install your new wheels and tires using half inch lug nuts and torque the lug nuts to 55 foot pounds using a 19 millimeter chrome deep well socket. Lift the rear of the cart up and remove the jack stands. Drive the cart for a short distance to set in your new lift kit before adjusting the camber and alignment. To check the camber, place a carpenter square at the middle of the tire. If there's a gap at the top of the tire, that's negative camber. If there's a gap at the bottom, that's positive camber. Our goal here is to achieve zero camber. To adjust, loosen the outer jam nuts of the upper A-arm turnbuckle and turn the turnbuckle in either direction to correct the camber accordingly. Retighten the jam nuts when finished and repeat on both sides. Before adjusting the toe setting, make sure that the steering wheel is centered. Using a tape measure, find the distance between the center line of the tires on the front side and then again on the rear. The front measurement should be approximately 1 8 inch to 1 quarter inch less than the measurement taken at the rear of the tire to achieve a slight positive toe end setting. To adjust the toe, loosen the jam nut on the steering rack with a 17 millimeter wrench and adjust the steering rack with a 12 millimeter wrench. Adjust both sides accordingly and then retighten your jam nuts. At this point, you wanna test drive the cart around and then recheck your camber and toe adjustments. If further adjustment is needed, do the camber first and toe second. Reattach the factory bumper using the retained hardware with a 13 millimeter socket and a 10 millimeter wrench. After lifting your vehicle, you may need to adjust the brake tension. Remove the floor mat and pedal assembly cover to access the brake adjustment panel. To adjust the brakes, loosen the front jam nut with a half inch wrench by turning it towards the driver's side of the cart. Then adjust the turnbuckle to the desired tension. 
Place the included modified vehicle warning sticker in an area that is visible to the operator. You're now finished installing your Mad Jacks King XD lift kit designed for the club car precedent and tempo.